Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Sviokla. I'm uh, founder of uh, GAI, GAI Insights. We're an AI research firm. And uh, here to talk to you late in the afternoon about <laughs> healthcare insurance, an amazing story of transformation. <laughs> Bill? Good. Yeah, I'm Bill Fandrick. I'm the executive vice president in charge of technology and operations for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. All right, let's get started. So, um, the um, Bill, I know that uh, um, folks in the audience may not know about the transformation that you're in the middle of. Um, and we're going to get to uh, an amazing transformation of a $36 billion um, healthcare company that went on a long data journey and is now fielding three generative AI uh, platforms, both for them and for the industry. But first, give us a little background in terms of the organization so people have an idea of the complexity. Sure, sure. Um, we, in, as mentioned, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, we are a $36 billion company, approximately 10,000 employees, uh, located in Detroit, Michigan, but we have 5 million members, a big percentage of those are actually members who live in other states, but employers reside in Michigan. Yes. But we're also part of a blue system, a mm -hmm. blue system of 34 independent entities through a fabric of an association delivering services, healthcare services to over 115 million Americans. And through our umbrella, we honor each other's services and territory for any, you can go anywhere in the country and get services. Yeah, and, and from our conversations from before, this is, a, this is a mutual organization, so you're mm -hmm. working with net net profits of a percent to a percent and a half. Yep. And in the past 10 years, for those of you who don't know, healthcare has gotten massively more complex from 0% government business to about a third, right? right? And you're paying for all kinds of different things, and you have to go from being a functionally excellent organization to one that's actually a platform for service. That's correct. Okay. So tell us about what... How did you start that journey, and how did you get to the place where you can deploy safe, non-hallucinating generative tools today? Yeah, I think first and foremost, what you articulated is important um, to understand. The world has changed in healthcare, the model, the services, what's expected to us, and even how we define healthcare. And yes, the government with the ACA and the advancements, Medicare, Medicaid, and growth in there in the individual market, as well as our traditional employer market, creates some very unique, highly regulated, hundreds and hundreds, seven, over 700 regulations that we have to abide by. Yeah. And I think that the challenge, the challenge with all this um, is the sheer fact that we are controlled in our pricing, we are controlled in many regulatory things, but more importantly that years ago we were all defined um, success based on how broad our network, could you get access to care, what our discount rates would be with providers, how do well we process claims and pay claims, and how well we answer the phone call. Well, now we're looking at the whole person, and that's what's expected. If you, everyone knows this, there's such a correlation, we call it social determinants of health, of so many factors in your life that impact your physical health. And many of those things are the major contributors to it. So when we think about behavioral health, we talk about substance abuse, we talk about um, housing, jobs, uh, support systems in the social market, all become part of the services and things that we need to bring to bear to help a person deal with whatever's occurring in their life and to live a healthier and happier life. That creates a degree of complexity and it flips the game from a transaction to an information-based business. Yeah, it's, um, for uh, again, I, I don't know if, if how many folks in the audience know, if you get this wrong, you can get fined as much as $50,000 a record. And if Bill gets it really wrong, he upgrades his uh, outfit to an orange jumpsuit. Exactly. Um, in terms of- Yeah, I personally have to sign a lot of documents that shows, that commits that we've put all the controls and guarantees around privacy and security to all our members out there. Yes. So Bill, as you're doing this, what were the fa what do you th what were the phases of that development to move you know this huge organization to a point where you can deal with this complexity without driving up costs yeah i think the biggest thing to understand is is the transformation journey as you noted and we've been doing AI. I mean, we're an information-based company. I mean, I got 6,000 applications. We've got data scientists. We do predictive modeling and analytics. We've been doing AI for a decade. 
a plus in real uh, dozens of applications that we deployed with data scientists and use of helping us better understand the needs of our members and products that would best. But however, obviously Gen AI changes the game. But because of that, we flipped the mindset tra uh, transformationally. And I've heard the questions in earlier things about where do you start, how do you start? And I think it depends on where you are at that point. So we put in a new fabric, a new fabric of a, what we call a new technology ecosystem that's built high on a data fabric. It's built on integration and workflows. It's built on new models of how you services through different channels in providing instantaneous information based on the point of care or the point of the situation based on the need. So we've been on that journey. When you think about generative AI though, it, it redefines it takes it to another level. So we were able to, and through a 12 people, you know, a de that in, which is a whole different thing. It's not an army, which I think you can fail if you're that, but also a good partner. We have a company, Forum System, who is right here in Massachusetts. We've used that helped us on this journey, but has also adopted the AI, an AI engine that sits on our ecosystem. And within that, what we're able to do very quickly is start to provide, start to actually deploy service because we've already got the chassis for data and integration, but here's the catch. The biggest thing in industries like ours, can't speak for our industry, 90% of the most important information is not structured data. You say, well, why is that bad solved? A lot of reasons, I won't go through all the reasons why it's solved, but however, the point on that is that information, it makes, it's not economically feasible or even workflow feasible to digitize all that stuff from where it comes from. But Genevieve, what does it do? I can create a virtual data schema in taxonomies that allow me to tap into that information and search it and execute, no different than structured data, but apply it to entirely different human interfaces. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that we had a chassis, it was really how do we bring a digital transformation model that incorporates AI, right. how do we build into the fragments, and how do we rapidly start to do with new ways of working with the business? Now, Bill, we've got two minutes left. We just explained these are three uh, products in production, correct? That is correct. So in the last six months, we've had three product solutions there. One is, and I've heard a lot about security, how this do. Number one, anything we do that loses the trust, um, not only is financially very punitive, it's, significant, it's a game changer for us. We would lose a significant amount of business. So trust is there. The security tools and the models out there are totally inadequate to meet what we know we're going to need to be able to demonstrate. Virtually every one of our customers is asking us today in RFPs, what's your position on AI? How do you know how it's being used? Are you governing it? How are you secure? We have to guarantee that every individual who uses AI, it's based on their role and their purpose. Audit trails associated with that in controls. Equally, when you, we've built through forum, with forum systems, ability to access all these public domains and leverage them internally. The second is a contracts. We, ten, less than 10% of our, the $36 billion is our cost. Everything else is third party contracts. Hundreds and hundreds and if not thousands of different kinds, very complex, very unique to certain situations. I have over $500 million of IT contracts. Using the AI engine, we're able to scan those, bring them, provide intelligence, helps us understand if a regulatory change, what needs to be in the contracts. Technology change occurs, we have different terms of different customers, how do we optimize that? How do I avoid redundant services? We're running out of time yeah. here. Last one, benefits. And last one's benefits, which is probably the most powerful thing out there, it gets to the structured data. You all know how difficult it is to navigate the healthcare system. You've been in the world. A lot of that's because information's not readily available. It's not in the format need. The intelligence for benefit data, bringing that so that the point of care, a point of interaction, based on you, based on the situation need, what is the right answer for you? Where should you get care? How should you get care? Where should you go? And what are those other things that you need to have? Awesome, thank you, Bill. I just wanna say, if you can do this in healthcare in these domains, you know, with real generative AI, driving complexity out of the business, you can do it anywhere. Thank you, Bill. Thanks. Okay.